Okay. Welcome back, everyone at home. We are here in very sunny Texas to do yet another presentation for everybody, <laughs> both here on campus and at home. And today I want to talk about food. By now, everyone knows that they're on a plant-based diet. Mostly when people hear plant-based diet, they think of really boring food with no variety. And they think, how in the heck am I going to eat? People are so used to having dead birds, dead animals, mother's milk from animals we look nothing like. And when we take that away, they don't know what to put in their bodies. So today I'm here to go over some of the great alternatives. And there'll be uh, handouts for everybody at home, which I will be sending to you. Everybody here on campus has a copy. And let's start with our dairy products. The only reason that we have mother's milk from gigantic cows whose offspring are supposed to be gaining hundreds of pounds from their mother's milk, that would be cow's milk. Again, the idea is to help their little baby get big and fat and grow like a cow should. So is it no wonder that all of us who have been conditioned to eat mother's milk from a cow we look like cows. We get very obese. A lot of people come to me and they say, oh, but I love my cheese. Now you've been conditioned to love cheese, okay? Cheese smells like vomit. It does. And some of them really smell like old vomit. But we've been conditioned to love these things, just like we've been conditioned to like dead flesh. <clears throat> you know, like chicken wings, and things like that. Um, so I'm going to suggest that when you take any kind of um, dead flesh and cook it, you're going to develop what's called heterocyclic amines. Amino acids are the protein building, the building blocks of proteins. So when you cook meat, you break down some of the protein, especially when you really cook it well and you get heterocyclic amines, which are known carcinogens, and especially colon cancer. When people come to me with colon cancer, I ask them, what do you suppose caused this cancer? And people will say, I have no idea. And I ask them, do you eat meat? Oh yes, three times a day. You know, they eat things like bacon, total heterocyclic amines, total carcinogenic, not healthy food at all. So all, any kind of dead bird or dead animal that gets cooked is going to create large amounts of heterocyclic amines which break down human DNA. Our bodies are simply not designed to digest this kind of food. We have 30 feet of intestines, which includes a huge large intestine that goes up, across, and down, and out. And then we have all those small intestines that go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in our, these tiny little torsos. So people that eat a meat-based diet, well, the animals that eat a meat-based diet, the length of their intestines is the length of their spine. So dogs and cats and, uh, you know, all these other animals that are carnivores with ripping teeth to rip flesh, their GI tract is as long as their spine. And it's a big, thick muscle. It mulches the meat. It pulls out the protein. And then within anywhere between four to six hours, it's going to come out the other end. So with human beings, our transit time is sometimes 24 to 48 hours. <clears throat> and actually, Gary did an experiment with people in one of our health support groups. He had everybody have uh, corn. And he says, don't really chew it well, just swallow it and see how long it takes to come out in your bowel movement. And some people, it took four days because it's got to travel all around your intestines and then come up, around, and down. 
So many times when people come to retreat or when they come for the anti-aging study, they find that their bowel movements are more regular. Why? Because a plant-based diet is higher in fiber. And you have two types of fiber. You have soluble fiber that's going to go in and clean out the gallbladder and the liver. And then you have insoluble fiber, things like psyllium husks, or a lot of the fibers in our sweet potatoes and beans that are more insoluble. And they're there to be a little loofah for the inside of the GI tract. So as it's passing along with peristalsis, it's cleaning off the wall of the intestine, which is a great thing. So when you have meat or dairy in the diet, it doesn't do that. It just kind of, the body has to kind of push it along by itself and it's not cleaning anything. It's rotting and decomposing, kind of like roadkill on a 98.6 degree day in hot, humid weather. And if you've ever driven by a dead animal, you, you know why human feces of meat eaters is so disgusting. The stench is so bad because you're getting rotted flesh, decomposed flesh. So of course, <clears throat> when you're a vegan, like we are, your shit don't stink. You can tell that to people too. You can take that right home. And notice, yeah, you'll see a big difference. So <clears throat> when you have a clean colon, it changes your whole gut biome. So when you're putting dead rotted things and dairy products, dairy products create phlegm in the body. And this phlegm builds up and the little villi that line every square inch of your small intestines gets caked up with this phlegm that ends up drying out over time. So you're not really absorbing the nutrients in your body the way you could. <clears throat> so when that happens, you disrupt the gut biome, you're not digesting well, you're not absorbing nutrients, and you can put all the vitamins you want in your body, but how, they, how are they gonna get in there if your villi are caked up with dead rotted flesh and phlegm from dairy products? So there's always someone that will raise their hand and say, what about goat milk? There's always someone that says that because goats are smaller than cows. And what do you suppose my answer is? Nah. Goat milk, no. No. It's another, it's another animal we look nothing like. So you'll notice that people that have goat milk, they tend to want to eat tin cans. No, I'm kidding. Anyway. <clears throat> So I discourage you from having any kind of dairy products. That includes yogurt and ice cream and milk and cheese. And now you're thinking, oh my God, but am I ever gonna be able to have pizza again? And what about a grilled cheese sandwich? How am I gonna do it? Oh my God. Because the other thing we don't want you to have is gluten, wheat gluten. Wheat gluten also gums up the intestines. And a lot of people have more, over time, we have evolved or devolved with gluten in our diets. So our bodies are less and less tolerant of gluten. So we're in a place now where we want people to eliminate gluten. So they go, oh my God, what about bread? I love bread. Well, there's good news all around. And then, of course, when you tell people not to eat, when I first went to one of Gary's retreats back in 1993, he said, you have to give, need to give up meat, dairy, sugar, wheat, alcohol, and caffeine. And I thought, like, that's my whole diet. <laughs> I said, what do I eat, air? And that's not unlike some of the responses I get from people who come to me with stage four cancer who want to reverse their cancer. And by the way, I've, in my work, I've been an oncology nurse for over 46 years. So yes, there are ways to, I've had many people reverse stage four cancers. I've had people come out of hospice and a year and a half later, they're in the gym, buff, working out, and they're doing great and they reverse their cancer. How, how is that possible? 
course it's possible because we look at what created it and we deconstruct all the causes. And then we starve the cancer cells, we build up the cell walls of your healthy cells so that they become impervious to further metastasis, we supercharge the immune system, and we give the body everything it needs to work on your behalf. That's the whole idea of putting food in your body, is to give your body what it needs to work on your behalf. We have been conditioned by the FDA, because they own most of the media, 80% of it, and the, and the rest of it is pretty much owned by large corporations, which is why every other commercial is about a food or a drug. Don't worry, eat that pepperoni pizza because we have Pepsi. Don't worry, we'll put that fire out for you. And it's got a number of side effects. So you've been hypnotized very carefully by the FDA to eat products that make you feel good. So most of us are eating to fill our stomachs, to stop feeling hungry, and to have the taste that we have been hypnotized to love. So I'm gonna to suggest to you that you can still have the taste, the texture, and the volume of delicious food. And here on campus, we have had the wonderful opportunity to work with a number of different gourmet chefs. One of them is Gary's daughter, who has made some spectacular dishes, and most of all, guilt-free desserts. Doesn't that sound like an oxymoron, a guilt-free dessert? The whole idea of dessert is you should feel guilty after you eat it, right? Nope. These desserts are very healthy, and uh, they're very delicious, and you don't have to load them up with sugar. So I want to go over some options with everybody today with what alternatives there are to dairy and meat and things like that. And by the way, when you fry foods or you overcook things, you charbroil, or down here in Texas, we barbecue. Barbecue is a food group in Texas, I have learned. We don't barbecue anything down here. You can make something taste like it's barbecued without all the toxins, but frying and barbecuing and deep, and deep frying and charbroiling, that creates acrylamides. Acrylamides are also toxic substances that create cancer in the body. So you want to avoid that. So how do we cook our food? We're not against cooking food at all, but you can saute things. We do a lot of sauteing here. If we bake things where it's very specific high heat oils like coconut oil that we use, if we're going to bake something and we're not baking it for long periods of time. So sauteing, steaming, all fine to do. So here at the villa, we, have, we can still cook our food. We're not doing all raw foods. We do about 60%, maybe 70% raw foods. On our fasting day, we do all raw foods. We're doing protein smoothies and green juices and lemon water and red berry juices and even some teas and some soups, some broths, which are all fine to have when you're doing your one day a week fast. And Gary's told us over and over again that the science shows that when you have a liquid fast one day a week, I do, everybody here on campus does, one day a week of a liquid fast, you are giving the gut a break. And that means that you're gonna have more time to detox because here's the thing, you cannot be detoxing your liver and digesting food simultaneously. So when you ingest food, your body's gonna start digesting it and the detox process shuts off. But if you're having liquids all day long, we do it for a day and a half here on our fasting day. It's actually almost two days, isn't it? Two full days that we don't have solid food. You're giving your gut a magnificent break, and now, as long as it's just liquids you're putting in, you're detoxing all that time. The liver is detoxing, and some of us have years and years of detoxification to do. So we want to encourage everyone to take one day a week and just do a liquid fast. We also encourage people to do not eat any solid food after 7 p.m. 
7 p.m. That doesn't mean you can't have liquids. You can have your teas, your lemon water, or green juice. That's all fine. So this way, your body is actually healing all through the night. Your gut is given that opportunity. I know so many people that are sitting on the computer and they're munching on food, leftovers and whatnot. And these are the people that stay overweight and they just can't figure out why they can't lose weight. Well, I'm exercising, right. But you're also eating late at night and you're preventing your body from detoxifying. And all of us need to detoxify our livers no matter what. So those are, these are some very, very, very important points to understand when you're on a healthy lifestyle protocol in terms of your food. So I went 20 years without eating pizza. Yes, I did, because I had breast cancer and I didn't want to mess with it. I reversed it. It took me two and a half years to reverse my breast cancer and it took a total of four and a half years to reverse all my viruses, doing intravenous biooxidative therapy and very high dose IV vitamin C therapy. Yes, Gary will say, we were the first place in the world to do 200 grams of IV vitamin C. And guess who was the first person that got that dose? <laughs> so he figured if I didn't explode, he could try it on other people. <laughs> and he did. And it was a great success. I happened to be witness to some of the most amazing reversals of AIDS, HIV, cancer. Ah, oh, I'm still amazed at all of the different uh, diseases or imbalances that I've seen uh, Gary help heal with some intravenous therapies. Now, I'll tell you, I've had people say, well, IV therapies are not natural. Yeah, well, eating dead birds and dead animals ain't natural either, but we do it. And our ancestors did it, paleo diet, because they weren't harvesting and they were starving. The Native Americans did that too, but again, it was in the winter when they had no food and it was for survival. We are not in a survival situation. We are in an industrialized society. So we shouldn't be putting that stuff in our body. So anyway, 20 years I went without pizza and then I discovered this wonderful brand called Daya. It's on your sheet, D-A-I-Y-A. -I -I -A. This is a company and you're gonna see many companies creating non-dairy tastes, textures that are just like real dairy. And I gotta tell you, I know them all now. So Daya creates a pizza. It's a gluten-free, dairy-free pizza. It's not calorie-free, but they have a margarita pizza with basil and a, and a vegan mozzarella. I'm Italian, work with me here, people. And it is absolutely delicious. It's a thin crust. You pop it in the toaster oven, 15 minutes, the buzzer goes off, you got a delicious pizza. They have a um, roasted garlic and mushroom pizza. They have a cheese lover's pizza. My God, they, they have a, um, a vegetable pizza with all kinds of roasted vegetables on it over the cheese. Amazing, absolutely delicious. So every Friday at my house, we have pizza. So enjoy. It's not exactly like the Umberto's pizza I grew up with, but it's very, very close. So experiment. Explore. Now, how many of you love cream cheese? The rest of you are lying. Even the peacocks like cream cheese. <laughs> Daya, as well as another uh, Kite Hill, you see that on your handout as well. They make a vegan cream cheese and they've got one with strawberries, one with chives, and then they have a plain cream cheese. It is delicious, and you're, and you're thinking to yourself, well, what good is cream cheese if I can't put it on a bagel or an English muffin? I know that's what you're thinking. I heard some of you just say that. <laughs> Guess what? We have something called sprouted bagels and sprouted English muffins. That means they're not using wheat gluten. They're not using white flour. They're using sprouts to make the bread. 
and it's very healthy and it's very delicious. Slap on some of that Kite Hill chive cream cheese. It's a good day. Yeah? Now, what about um, cheesecake? How many people like cheesecake? Sure, no, no hesitation there. <laughs> well, Daya makes um, a key lime cheesecake. They make a New York cheesecake and they make a strawberry cheesecake. And then in the fall, they make a pumpkin spice cheesecake. Again, gluten-free, dairy-free, not calorie-free. So there's another option. So anytime I go to an event where I'm gonna be visiting someone and they want me to bring something, I'm gonna bring a diet cheesecake and then I'll get some organic berries to put on top. Another guilt-free dessert right there. And how many like blue cheese dressing? Yeah. See, the people that aren't sure about blue cheese will go, mm, I don't know. The people that love blue cheese, the hand goes right up. Yes. They actually make a blue cheese dressing that's non-dairy. And it's wonderful. I, I defy you to tell me that it tastes any different from blue cheese. So again, we have dairy alternatives. Now, another fabulous brand of uh, non-dairy cheese is called Follow Your Heart. Follow Your Heart. And they make a smoked Gouda. I don't even want to tell you. It is so delicious. So you're thinking, can I actually make grilled cheese? Yes, you absolutely can. You get a sprouted whole grain bread. In our health food stores down here in Texas, they actually have a legume, a sprouted legume. So it's sprouted beans that they turn into bread. Oh my God, it's delicious. And what you do is you put your Earth Balance. Earth Balance is a buttery spread that's non-dairy, tastes every bit as good, if not better, than dairy butter. I toast the bread, and then I put some tomatoes on. I put a couple of slices of my Daya cheese, and they have American cheese, they have cheddar, they have um, the smoked Gouda, absolutely delicious. And then, who doesn't like bacon on their grilled cheese sandwiches? See what I'm saying? Where are we gonna get bacon? They have something called Fakin Bacon. It does not look like bacon. It doesn't look like bacon. It's all right. It tastes damn close, okay? So work with me. So fake and bacon, you cook it up like bacon and you put the strips of the fake and bacon on top of the melted cheese. Then get a little, oops, get a little arugula and then presto, you've got yourself a delicious grilled cheese sandwich. So I have grilled cheese every Saturday at my house. So you understand that it's all good. There's ways to get around the things that you loved. Now another great brand is called Chow, C-H-A-O, Chow Cheese. Another delicious cheese. Um, they have a, an original. They have one with all kinds of herbs in it, all blended in. And uh, they also have a jalapeno pepper in the cheese. They're a little pricier than Follow Your Heart, but again, if you're looking for a delicious cheese alternative, you got it. It's right there, and it's delicious. And then you have all the non-dairy milks and non-dairy ice creams. Yes, you can have ice cream. It's wonderful. So there's coconut ice cream. There's almond milk ice cream. There's soy milk ice cream. So there's all kinds of non-dairy ice creams out there. I suggest you get plain vanilla and then put carob nibs or uh, cacao nibs, carob. Uh, you can put fruit on it, organic fruit. Make it taste great. I used to love to put little cinnamon and nutmeg over vanilla um, rice stream ice cream. It's delicious. And by the way, cinnamon is thermogenic. It helps you burn fat cells. So there's nothing like sitting down to a nice bowl of delicious ice cream with cinnamon and saying, I'm gonna be burning some fat tonight. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy my food. <clears throat> so there's also uh, Follow Your Heart has a vegan Parmesan cheese. Cause I know some of you are thinking, oh my God, I love pasta. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna miss it. Well, we've had rice pasta here. Rice pasta is a fabulous alternative to semolina or, or whole wheat pasta. So enjoy it. 
and put all different kinds of toppings. One a great meal that we've had here is we have tahini and a toasted sesame oil. And then if you want, you can put your, your uh, vegan grated cheese or I like to save that for when I use real pasta sauce. And you could put in peas, spinach, or you can do what the Italians do in aglioia, huh? Eh? A little olive oil, some fresh garlic. Delicious. You know by now you're talking to a foodie, right? Okay, I'm just making sure you, f you figured that out by now. I love to eat. That's why I have to exercise a lot, because I love to eat. And again, anytime you're in a new situation with unfamiliar information, it's like, what? What am I supposed to eat? Air? No. You say, immediately switch your energy to what I can have and say, all right, what's out there that I can have that's going to be pretty darn close? And this is the things they've created. And what's so wonderful is that more and more people are buying this. They're not buying dairy products. They're not buying you know, milk and ice cream. They're focusing on this because it's so healthy for you. Now you're putting things in your body that are not creating phlegm, that are delicious to taste. They even have a vegan pesto. It's delicious. Put that on your rice pasta. It's wonderful. So lots of dairy alternatives. There should, you shouldn't be missing dairy at all whatsoever. Now, what about meat alternatives? That's tricky. <clears throat> we, we like to have our, a nice section on our plate for dead birds or dead animals. Well, we have alternatives for you. <clears throat> there's a, a, um, there's a, a company called Gardein, <clears throat> G-A-R-D-E-I-N. They have, um, it's a soy or pea protein based. Uh, they have like chicken tenders, but they're not. Uh, they have um, fish fillets, but they're not. In fact, my mother thinks she's eating uh, breaded fish and it's just the Gardein fish fillets. And I, I make her, you know, a little dipping sauce. It's okay. She loves it. She thinks it's great. It's good for her. It's healthy. I, I talked about the fake and bacon and then all the other protein alternatives. My goodness, in the handout, you're going to see all different kinds of beans. Beans are a great protein, especially when you mix them with grains. And uh, there's a saying in, in, we learn when we're learning nutrition, a grain in a bean is a complete protein. Very simple. So when you combine beans and you combine grains and here at the villa, we've had dishes that we have had millet, we've had uh, all kinds of amaranth and spelt and oats and quinoa, lots of quinoa. We've had a lot of wild rice. Um, we have brown rice. It's wonderful. There's all, all different grains. And for some of you who aren't familiar with the grains, this is the time to learn. Grains are fairly inexpensive, especially organic grains, and organic beans are inexpensive. And it's okay if you want to get your organic beans in cans because they're all BPA free, they all have special linings in them. So feel free to have uh, canned beans as well. So lots of beans. Um, then there's nuts. Look at all the different nuts you have to, to choose from. Um, Gary's done so much work on all the different nuts, walnuts for your hearts, pistachio nuts, Brazil nuts. It's just amazing. These food, these nuts are, it's called the nut meat. So there's your meat right there, nut meat. And they're loaded with healthy proteins. It, you'll never gain weight if you're having portioned amounts of nuts. Now I had one guy who was obese and he goes, oh good, I can have nuts. And he would eat an entire jar of planters peanuts. No. Peanuts have aflatoxins. Aflatoxins are toxins. They're very toxic to the human body. So I had an uncle that was addicted to peanuts and peanut butter. And at the age of 74, he developed leukemia and he died two years later. I mean, when he, when he ate, he didn't eat just a handful of nuts. He would consume the entire gigantic jar of, of nuts. So have organic nuts, raw is always best, and you can always season them. You can season nuts with powdered garlic or powdered onion and sea salt. Remember, sea salt 
has all the minerals in it, especially Himalayan. Himalayan pink salt and sea salt, they're loaded with minerals. That was a big concern I had when I first started working with this diet was how, I can't use table salt, so how am I gonna flavor my food? When I learned it's sodium chloride that creates swelling in the ankles of people as they age, not sea salt, because sea salt has all of the minerals in it. So I have people whose doctors say, I have a no salt diet. I mean, how bland is that? Who wants to eat like that? But when you have things like Himalayan sea salt, I use something called Herbamare, H-E-R-B-A-M-A-R-E, Herbamare. And it's Himalayan sea salt mixed with all kinds of different herbs. And I season my food with that. So it's lower in, in regular salt, but it's loaded with flavor. It's just delicious. So I always carry, I always have a whole container uh, in, my, in my cupboard. So I always have my herb amari or I have my sea salt. So enjoy. And Gary also flavors his foods with a lot of lemons and limes. So we had a, an onion soup. And you know, most times we have onion soup, we're going to have melted Gruyere, right? Right? <laughs> no. Gary puts lemons and limes in it. And it tastes salty, but there's no salt in it. You're tasting the lemon. It's just amazing how we can do this and we can fool our taste buds. Another thing that happens when you're on a diet like this, by the way, is that our taste buds are so conditioned to having the meat and the dairy and the sugar and the wheat that you tend to just taste those things. After a couple of weeks, having all kinds of varieties in spices and nuts and seeds and all the different textures and the nut milks, and when you have all these different flavors, suddenly your taste buds wake up. Anybody on campus have, have noticed that since they're here? Yeah, a lot of people. I didn't realize how many different taste buds I had until I started having a vegan diet with lots and lots of variety. So other sources of protein, quinoa. Quinoa is, is a very high protein grain. Anybody that I work with that has cancer, I encourage them to have quinoa as their grain. Quinoa or wild rice, never white rice. White rice is just pure sugar, turns to sugar very quickly. Brown rice, not so much. Wild rice, hardly. So it's brown rice, wild rice, and quinoa. <clears throat> so if you have any kind of cancer or sugar issues, stick with quinoa as your grain. Now, a lot of controversy about tofu. If you're getting an organic tofu, um, having too much tofu is not great if you have hypothyroid, if you have any kind of breast cancers, because in large quantities, let me repeat myself, large quantities, they become estrogenic to your body. So you don't want to have large volumes of tofu. However, to make a dish with some grilled or sauteed tofu with flavorings, and remember, tofu tastes like nothing. It tastes like nothing. It tastes like the seasonings that you add to it. So I encourage you to add seasonings to your tofu. You know, let it marinate, let it grill. It's wonderful. And then mix it with vegetables, you know, spinach or kale or collards. Uh, throw in some lentils, some red lentils, and then lots of garlic and onion and other, all the other spices. So tofu is wonderful, but not in large quantities. Now, in, if you have tempeh, Tempeh and miso are fermented soys. Fermented soy is very healthy for you because it contains higher amounts of genistine. Genistine is a cancer killer. So it almost seems like, hmm, and then you want to make it all organic. So those are the, uh, the tempeh and miso are very good soy products if someone has cancer. And you don't have to worry that they're estrogenic because they're fermented. So enjoy tempeh, and tempeh is, is really just a fermented soy mixed with an organic grain. Usually it's brown rice or something like that. It could be mixed with amaranth, it could be mixed with any number of things. Fake and bacon is a soy product that has that little smoky flavor. That is wonderful for you. 
<clears throat> then you have other things like hummus. Hummus is chickpeas and lemon. You put it in your food processor. A lot of people make their own hummus at home. It's wonderful. I'll tell you this about hummus though. It's a very acid food. Um, so I want you to mix it with vegetables. Mix it with uh, lemon. These are very alkaline foods. And too many foods that are acidic create inflammation in the body. But if you have a balanced diet, and this is what it's all about, it's about having a balanced diet, you're going to be able to mix the acidic hummus with a very alkaline spinach or something like that. Okay? Now, um, then there's jackfruit. This is a whole new thing. People are just coming to learn about jackfruit. It has the consistency of meat and it's a fruit. So you flavor it with seasonings. So it tastes like meat. There are so many wonderful recipes for jackfruit on the internet. Then there's uh, veggie burgers. Now, I happen to like Beyond Meat. They have a quarter pounder burger. I have it once a week. <laughs> And it is made from pea protein and all kinds of good, delicious ingredients. So that's another option. If you're craving meat, have one of these Beyond Meat Quarter Pounders. They're great. And, but oh, what about the hamburger bun? You get a sprouted burger bun. Yes, they make them. Yep. Lightly, lightly toast them. I mean lightly, so you're not getting any acrylamides, right? Lightly toasted. You, you cook up your burger in the pan. Put it on there. If you want, slap on your, your vegan cheese. Let it melt, because the good ones melt nicely. Some nice sliced raw Vidalia onion, a little organic ketchup, a little arugula. I like arugula, but you can put spinach. You can put any other kinds of lettuce greens that you want. Delicious. Delicious and very filling. And they also make things like sweet potato fries. They're made from organic sweet potatoes. They're already cut up for you. They're already seasoned. Pop them in the toaster oven for 20 minutes. Boom, you're done. While the burger's cooking, you know. So these are easy peasy meals. This is not, it's not difficult. And it's delicious. And it's filling. Unless you really enjoy brown rice and broccoli with Bragg's aminos. Then enjoy that. <laughs> if that's enjoyable to you. All right. They also have, um, oh, portobello mushroom caps. You can make those into burgers. Did you know that? Portobello mushroom caps. You put them in the oven, 350 for like two minutes, right? You melt your cheese on top. Put them on a sprouted bun with your ketchup and your Vidalia onion. Oh, my God. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. Mushrooms, by the way, especially the medicinal mushrooms, are just great for you. Shiitake and maitake mushrooms, uh, miso soup with those mushrooms in it and some scallions. That's just wonderful. See, in Chinese medicine, food is your medicine. Food is how we treat people. So when we have people that have a lot of toxicity, we want them having loads of green juices, loads of green vegetables. It's alkalizing, it's oxygenating, and it's detoxifying. So everything we put in our mouth is now deliberate and we're planning on giving it to our body so it can work on our behalf. I'm hoping this is making sense to everybody. You can still enjoy the taste, the texture, the volume. And of course, you're not binging and you're not pigging out. You're having portions and you're exercising. We want people here to exercise five days a week and take two days of recovery. Two full days where we don't have um, supplements, we don't exercise, we're not having solid food. It's a time to pull back and let your body recover. And then during the week, we get out there and we push ourselves. We're not doing junk exercise. We're challenging our bodies. And for those of you at home doing this protocol, I want you to challenge yourself. And by the way, there are lots of YouTube stations, channels, and, and all kinds of DVDs things you can download, you can do yoga at home, you can do meditation at home, you can do good, hard cardiovascular workouts at home. I encourage people to get rebounders. I have a rebounder in my house and I bounce at least 10 to 15 minutes a day. It moves the lymphatics, it cleans out the lymphatics all around. So put some great music on and bounce. 
right? Um, if you can get a treadmill, and you don't even need equipment at home. Anyone can work out. Everyone can work out. I have sit and be fit for people that, well, my ankle, well, my knees, and well, you know, I'm in pain. No, sit and be fit. You sit your ass down in a chair and you work out. You can even do cardiovascular sitting in a chair. Yes, you can. So when people are determined to get healthy, they figure it out. So there's also uh, the chair aerobics. It's another way that we can exercise. So I'm encouraging people to eat, but I'm also encouraging you to exercise. And I'm also encouraging you if you're having food cravings. One of the best ways to stop cravings, by the way, get some crushed ice, squeeze some lemon on it. I like a couple of drops of lemon stevia because I like everything sweet. And you chew on that. It suppresses the appetite center in your brain. How many people knew that? Okay, you all owe me a dollar. Good. <laughs> now, there is also a site, get this, fakemeats.com. See, more and more people are inventing foods that are not meat that are still healthy for you. Fakemeats.com. They have a whole array. They have mushroom jerky. It looks like beef jerky, but it's made from portobello mushrooms with teriyaki on it. It's delicious. Crazy good. They have an Alfredo, not unlike what we had here. We had a cashew sauce Alfredo. Oh my God. Who ever thought we could have an Alfredo meal? But they, they teach you at fakemeats.com. All the different products that they have. They're amazing. So that's another thing. So, and Nutcase. Nutcase is another brand. And they also have uh, all kinds of uh, veggie burgers. It's all made from nuts, and it's delicious. It's crazy good. So try it out. See how you like it. Now, I'm, I'm giving everybody um, a copy of all the different foods. Green vegetables, seaweed, spices, all the other vegetables, root vegetables, the grains, the beans, and you turn that thing right over. And now you have nuts and seeds and all the different fruits and the cooking oils and all the other oils. And you'll notice that if you pick up any of Gary's books, I, I brought his book, um, The Anti-Inflammatory Anti-Arthritis Cookbook. And you'll notice that he's taking a nut or a seed and a vegetable, maybe a root vegetable. He'll throw in fruit. I mean, he mixes it up. We have all different oils, avocados, sliced up in, in a salad with sprouts. You'll notice that he's just taking one from each list, putting spices in there and creating a dish. Every single one of you could be a gourmet vegan chef at home. But again, it's a matter of educating yourself on what foods to eat, what combinations are gonna be delicious for you. So experiment with this stuff. And if you have any questions at all, I want to hear from you. You can email me at whnn at aol.com. That is my email. My first business was called Holistic Nursing Networks, whnn at aol.com. I am one of the last six people on AOL. I am. But I've had that email since email came out. And everybody knows it, so that's why I keep it. So go ahead and email me. And for those of you at home who uh, did blood work, bear with me. I'm at the end of going over the blood work with people here on campus. And I have a list of who wants me to go over their blood work. I'll be happy to contact you and go over your blood work.